Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Professor. How are you, Samara? Can I'm good. Everyone, oh, great, great. Um, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, it's good. Okay. Good, how are you? Uh, Alicia just dropped something in the chat box, I believe. Uh, good afternoon. All righty. Um, so uh, I see uh, 11 people, right? 11 people in the uh, Collaborate. Let me just check how many are in today's forum. Number should match. Uh, okay, so I see only seven. I see only seven in the uh, today's forum. This is something very important. Uh, if you haven't signed into today's forum, you must do that ASAP because this is the uh, uh, this is the only physical proof of your attendance. Okay, if you don't do this, I wouldn't know if you. I mean, I can see your names here, but it's not like I'm writing this or I'm, you know, there's no way I can copy this. Um, uh, the collaborate session is just fleeting, right? So before coming to the collaborate session, before coming to the collaborate session, uh, you must do this. You must establish your physical record of attendance. That's the first thing, okay? Always keep keep in mind, uh, establish the physical record of attendance, okay? So if you haven't done it yet, please do it ASAP. So I see now 11 here, 11 people, and I see 13 people here, so... Uh, uh, so it looks like you're just coming to the uh, collaborate first. But listen, over and over again, you go to this first. This is the first thing, right? You go to this first and firmly establish your physical record of attendance. That way it, can, it cannot be argued, it cannot be disputed, right? If you have, if you have a physical proof, there's nothing, there can be no dispute. There's no, there can be no argument, right? As to, uh, I mean, you know, um, think about it. Yeah. If uh, you must have watched a lot of, you know, uh, uh, movies or TV shows about, you know, um, um, court battle, and in the court of law, what rules? Evidence, always the evidence. So. Um, uh, and that's quite important, you know, later, you know, uh, you cannot say, oh, professor, I was there, I attended, you know, uh, oh, where is the proof? I mean, if, if I don't see your name here, there is no proof, right? So keep in mind, always nothing beats the physical proof, right? Nothing beats the physical proof. Leave no room for dispute, right? No room for any, you know, potential dispute, right? Okay, I see uh, 14 people here, good. And I see 14, so the numbers match, numbers match. Yes, Mohammed. go ahead, Mohammed. No, that was an accident. Okay, all righty, all righty. So um, uh, in the last class, right, uh, uh, we talked about, oops, uh, we talked about the, uh, I should open the uh, whiteboard, right? All right, so a lot of things, sorry. All right, uh, so basically, you know, um, We talked about, you know, uh, holding pure holding period return is basically the total return, total return during the holding period, right? And it is uh, basically, you know, uh, 
the holding period, if the holding period is uh, starting from time zero, think about the timeline, right? And let's say this is time t plus n, right? So time, uh, if n is, if n is 11, right? If uh, this will be time 11, right? Uh, if n is 11. That means, you know, uh, let's say 10, 10 years, right? For example, uh, starting from time zero, this will be uh, right time 10. So uh, the whole point is that um, we want to know how much the uh, price of our asset has changed between time zero or, you know, between time t and time, time t plus n, right? And then uh, whatever is the uh, additional cash flow during that time, right? Over time. It runs from time one to uh, time t plus n. Actually, um, we can make this. Uh, depending on, you know. And then, of course, we'll have to. Uh, divided by the uh, initial investment, right? So think about it. This will be time one. I mean, if n is 10, right? This will be time two, time three, and goes on, right? This will be uh, t9, right? I mean, if your holding period is 10 years, uh, we can express it this way. Again, uh, the reason I'm using, instead of just, you know, T0, T1, T2, T3, the, the reason I'm using, you know, uh, uh, T plus N, uh, this is to generalize, right? Because it can be applied to any situation where N can be any number, right? And also, this is called, you know, um, I've been telling you, uh, ROI, return on investment. But of course, return holding period return is uh, just one case of return on investment because return on investment um, uh, can be, I mean, the holding period can be 10 years, five years, or even two days, three days, um, the return on investment uh, can be uh, for the entire holding period or for uh, annualized case. So, uh, so I was going to talk about uh, uh, why we need uh, okay, let me let me uh, give you an example. The, uh, let's think about an example. So let's say you bought a stock, right? Uh, two people
So you and your friend uh, both, you know, uh, think about it. But then holding period, you 10 years, your friend five years. Professor? Yeah. Uh, how do I mark myself as president in Hotanis again? Ah, well, you have to create your own uh, discussion thread. So here, um, if you go to the today's forum, right? Mm -hmm. Look, here's the uh, oh, create, says thread. create thread, right? Okay, okay. Yeah, and then, you know, your name, right? Last name, comma, first name. That's it. You don't have to write anything. Wait, so it's a, a course information or? No, no, no. You got to go into the discussion board. Okay. Right? Okay. So if you go into the discussion board, you'll be able to see only this one. I mean, there, there are, you know, um, uh, it's already pre-built. I built in already, you know, all the uh, sessions, you know, until the end of the semester. But uh, what you can see uh, today is only this because the oh, I see, I see, I, I, I see. Yeah. Thank you. The forum is open only until the end of the day, right? right. Thank you, all thank right? you. You're welcome. And then you know uh, uh, you gotta check out, you know, uh, uh, Ryan Mullings. Ryan, uh, do I see Ryan Mullings here? Mullings, I don't see Mullings. Mm -mm. All righty, so Ryan, are you there? Ryan Mullings? Ryan? I don't see Ryan Mullings. Okay. So uh, this is wrong because this cannot, it won't be discovered. Right, you have to. Uh, uh, I should. It should be visible from here. It should be visible from here, right? In the list, it should be part of the list. And if um, anyone does it this way, I mean, this time <laughs> you were lucky. Um, I found you, right? Uh, I discovered your name here. But if I don't. Not every time I will do that. I just noticed two years, so that, that's just, you know, I noticed that somebody must have asked something. Somebody must have asked a question. So I, I looked in and then I found it. But if you are not, uh, sometimes, you know, I may not notice this, then you won't be discovered. You won't have any record, right? You won't be discovered. So uh, please create your own thread. Uh, and uh, I wonder where, you know, uh, Ryan is, but uh, all right, where was I? So let's say you and your friend, um, and you, your holding period was uh, 10 years, your friend, five years, and the holding period is all different. For example, for you, uh, time zero was uh, 2008. And then, uh, uh, no, uh, and then, um, time zero, right? This, this doesn't look like zero, but um, ah, let's put uppercase T. So 
obviously this will have to be 2018, right? Uh, from the end of 2008 uh, and to the end of 2018. And your friend, uh, 2012, end of 2012 and end of 2017. That will make it five years, right? Now, so suppose you're, um, and then holding period return, let's think about it. Holding period return was 60% for you, right? And the holding period return um, is 35% in this case. Okay. Um, now, uh, the question is, you know, then the question is, who did better? Who did better? Hmm? Some of you may say, oh, uh, your friend did better because he did, you know, 35% in half the time where you, you know, um, by absolute numbers, um, you did 60%. So it seems like you did better, right? It seems like you did better. But, you know, um, But some people would say, you know, uh, your friend did better because he, I mean, if in half time, in half the time, in other words, in your case, it could have been uh, only 30%. It would, have, it would be only 30% if you had ten, uh, five years. We can't, but the, here's the uh, uh, flaw in the logic. I mean, if you're thinking, I was going to ask, uh, I, was gonna, I was gonna ask you actually, you know, um, uh, the question and the end, I would expect the answers would be, you know, uh, your friend did better because he did, you know, 35% and half. Once again, I'm telling you, you can, there's no way you can tell that the way it is because half the time, all right, uh, if you held it for five years, would you have made 30 percent we wouldn't know it's not you cannot just divide it by two and get to 30 percent why uh this is the uh result of holding that asset for 10 years i mean in the first five years it could have been something different it's not what i'm telling what i'm saying is that you couldn't have even 30 30 Right? You couldn't, it, it wouldn't have been 30% in the first five years and another 30% in the next five years. Right? It, could, it, it, it wouldn't have been that even, first of all. In other words, uh, the, the price movement of your stock, the price movement of your uh, stock would would have, you know, would have had a totally different pattern in the first five years and in the second five years, right? Or, you know, uh, in the first two years, it was, you know, um, totally going down in the middle three years, it was uh, totally going up. And in the remaining five years, it was relatively, relatively flat or, in other words, there is no way, uh, uh, it's not a simple thing. I mean, of course, as a rule of thumb, you would divide it by two. Uh, and then, you know, uh, uh, well, uh, if you had it for, if your holding period was only five years, then it would have had, you know, 30%. Uh, Look, uh, again, uh, there's, uh, it's just a rule of thumb, uh, but there's no way, uh, there's no guarantee that it would have happened this way. Again, by the same logic, um, you cannot say 
your friend would have done better, right? Um, because for the, the, the friend sold it, your friend sold it after year five, but if he had continued to hold it, if he had continued to hold it uh, for another five years, there is no guarantee the second half he would have got another 35% in the second half, right? Everyone, everyone is following. Everyone, everyone understands, you know, what I'm talking about. Hmm? Yes, professor. Yes. All righty, all righty. So, uh, but only one person, huh? Only one person. What's the, what's the rest of the class? Um, yeah. So, okay, good, good. Uh, how do we? Then how do we? Uh, uh, go about it how do we compare you know two different uh hold uh, the returns from two different holding periods we'll have to annualize it we'll have to annualize okay so then the next question is how do we annualize So uh, annualizing um, annualized return means you know uh, annual average, right? Annualized return means annual average. So actually, annualized and annual are uh, slightly different because annual means the actual returns year to year, right? Annual return means you know actual year-to-year uh, -year return, whereas annualized means averaged, right? All these annual returns, averaged. So to uh, understand that, we will need, um, so on, we will need to understand the, uh, uh, the average that we need. Um, so, next question is then, uh, So what do we do? I mean, if I divide this, how would you uh, uh, find the average of this 10-year holding period return? Uh, that's 10-year, right? Or some people say, oh, don't I divide it by uh, 10? No, once again, you don't, you, there's, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing meaningful you get if you just divide this by 10. Uh, the reason is, uh, this is the result of the, uh, uh, this is the result of uh, capital gains over 10 years, right? And there is no way it grew at even rate every year. And dividing it by 10 is totally, you know, uh, 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 totally meaningless. It doesn't give you uh, uh, anything right. So first of all, uh, and what you thought about, uh, what you did a while ago was a simple average. And simple average is not the right uh, thing to do. Uh, so let's think about average. Average, um, uh, there are two types of average, first of all. Simple average or arithmetic average, they mean the same thing. Arithmetic average or simple average, they mean the same thing. Whereas, you know, um, uh, as opposed to the weighted average, and geometric average. Now you might think, wow, uh, weighted average must be the same thing as geometric average. No, no. Uh, uh, I didn't put or, I didn't put or there, right? I didn't put or, in other words, 
this means simple average is uh, also the arithmetic average, the same thing. A weighted average is not the same thing as geometric average. However, geometric average is a kind of weighted average. Okay, so let's um, uh, well let's think about what weighted average is. Right, first of all, um, uh, here's the um, Uh, your GPA, your GPA is a very good example of um, weighted average, right? Your GPA is a very good example of weighted average. Why? Uh, oops. Uh, first of all, let's think about it. Uh, suppose you took four classes last semester, four classes, right? English, math, and uh, uh, ethnic studies, and art. So, um, and then this was the result. You earned B plus in, in, in English, B plus, and B in math, and A minus in ethnic studies, and A in R. Oh, so uh, you're happy. You are, you know, uh, you think you will get at least something like, you know, A minus. I mean, if I average all this, at least it would be like B plus. Uh, is it going to be really like that? So let's say B plus, grade point for B plus is 3.5, B 3.2, A minus 3.7, A uh, 4. Then, so you might think, oh, I'm going to add them up. I'm going to add this and divide it by 4. Uh, because they are, there are four, uh, you took four classes. And then if you do that, it, you get to a 3.6. You get to 3.6. But, you know, you might say, oh, so my GPA is 3.6. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. Why? Uh, they are not, they are not all equal. Okay, they are not in equal footing. Uh, they are not equal in their weight. Right? They are, they are not equal in their weight. Now, English uh, has three credits, math has four credits, ethnic studies, two credits, uh, art, uh, one credit. I'm not saying all art classes are one credit. There are art, uh, three credit art and music class classes, and there are two credit. Uh, also, um, these days, I don't, uh, it's hard to find one credit art and music course, art or music course, class, but uh, in the past, you could easily find one or two credit art or music courses. Also, in the past, you could find easily, you know, uh, two credit ethnic studies course. Um, but what, why do they have different credits? I mean, math has the most credit. In general, all courses have three credits. Now, credits, uh, and if you Credits mean the importance. Cr credits mean, why is math cr uh, for credit? The, the courses that carry higher credits also meet uh, more hours during the week, per week. Uh, four credit courses meet four hours per week. Okay, but sometimes, you know, uh, some three credit courses also meet four hours. But generally, the number of hours and the number of credits match, right? And the reason some some math classes, even though they meet three hours, they are still getting four credits. And why? Well, that means you know math requires that much brain power. That goes without saying. Math math requires that much brain power. Um, more brain power. That's why they give more credits to math. So then. You cannot ignore the weight or the importance they uh, they give to these different courses. Um, so you must weight those credits. You must weight those importances. How do you do that? You multiply this 
to this, multiply this to this, multiply this to this, multiply this to this, this is the result, right? This column is the result. This times this is this, this times this. So all these weighted points, right? Sum, this is the sum of all the weighted points. And then you divide it by the sum of all those weights. You divide it by sum of all those weights. And then it comes to 3.47. That's your GPA. Okay. So this is very important, uh, especially both geometric average and weighted average are very important in finance because um, when you, if you have $1 million, right? If you have $1 million, you don't, uh, you don't just put it into a single a one stock, right? You don't put it into a single asset. When you have $1 million, right? You must diversify it into, you must be, you must hold it in a diversified portfolio. That means you must uh, allocate, um, you must allocate the assets by weight and in all diversified asset classes. So $1 million will be divided into uh, uh, stocks and bonds, commodities, and things like that, real estate. And the next question is, how much, will, how much of this $1 million will you put into stocks? And even in stocks, what stocks? The stocks must be all diversified, meaning you know they must be... Um, uh, they must be into all different sectors of the economy, different sectors, right? Not just into a single sector, right? So if I have $1 million, I shouldn't put that $1 million into Apple only or uh, Apple or Microsoft or, you know, in other words, you don't put all the money into one basket like the, uh, um, there's an old saying, you don't put all the nest eggs into one basket because if that basket falls, then you lose all the eggs, right? So you must diversify. And if, so industries must be different. It must be all diversified industries, right? Apple and Microsoft, they are in the same industry. I mean, uh, Microsoft is only uh, 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 software. Uh, but, you know, let's say IT, you don't put everything into IT, right? You don't put everything into a, a, a banking banks, right? You don't put everything into a, a utilities. It's just you must diversify, right? Uh, into different uh, uh, put into different stocks, different industries. And then the question is then, how much of my one million will I allocate into uh, stocks? So there must there will be weight, you know, forty uh, percent, something like forty percent. Okay, there is a weight. And how much of my one million will I put into a uh, uh, real estate? Um, like you know, thirty uh, percent. Uh, and how much will I put into a uh, uh, bonds? Twenty uh, percent. How much will I put into a uh, commodities? Ten percent. I mean, this kind of, you know, um, allocation, uh, it's basically a combination of weight, right? So then the result of my portfolio return, right? The, the result of my portfolio will be a, a, a weighted average of the returns, weighted average of the returns from all of those different uh, allocations, right? So everyone, everyone follows, everyone is following. I don't hear anybody. Yes, Professor. <laughs> all righty, Claudia. You sound Claudia. like a question. Yes. yes. All righty, all righty. Yes. So someone had a question. Someone had a question. I heard someone saying question. Oh, no, I was saying it didn't sound like it was a question when you made that comment. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, that was a question, although it was uh, it was almost like a rhetorical question. I was just, um, but I really wanted to know if you were following. All righty. And then 
So that's why we need weighted average. And then what is geometric average? Um, so let's take a look at this. Um, I want you to download If you go into uh, <laughs> ah well, someone is having a lot of fun <laughs> now. So if you go into the topics folder, right, uh, you will find this Excel file, right? You need to download this one. Okay, you need to download this one. Okay, and you must open it in front of you. Uh, Uh, where do I find it? Uh, topic one. There's only one folder that is visible now, right? You go into the topic one. Of course, that's course material, right? It's, it's course material, right? You have to. All right. And then, uh, do you have it in front of you? Do you have it in front of you? Uh, you but, have it. Professor, what, what is it called again? Okay. Give me a second. All right, when you open it, it will have only two sets of data, right? Two sets of data, but you know, uh, everything else must be empty, right? Okay. Um, are you in here? Did you go in here? Topic one folder? Yes. Yeah, then, you know, this one. Oh. You have only. Um, three files there. Otherwise, everything else is video, right? You have only three files. What else? Uh, it cannot be anything else, right? You need to download this. All right, do you have it in front of you now? So before, before I go, right, before I get started on that, uh, let me make it very clear that, um, uh, okay, first of all, um, well, let's see, you have this. Do you have this in front of you? I need um, your confirmation. Yes. Do you? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's, um, let's take a look at the uh, column A. Column A is year, right? So basically, you know, uh, and everything is as of the end of the year. In other words, these are house values, right? These are house price, home prices uh, at the end of the year. So let's say you bought, you bought a house, you bought a house at the end of 2005 and you, you held it for 11 years and sold it at the end of 2016. So then, you know, uh, of course, you don't have to sell it, but you know, um, just to uh, just to calculate holding period return, you don't have to sell it. I mean, you know, as long as you know the house value uh, at the end of the year, then you can uh, you can calculate the uh, holding period return. But first of all, <clears throat> how many years is that? It's 11 years, not 12 years. You might think, you know, oh, counting from, uh, if I, okay, if I highlight this like this, hey, where is, why isn't it? Usually when you highlight uh, data range, uh, why isn't it showing? Usually when you highlight it like this, you will see a small box uh, next to it that says, you know, uh, uh, five, five R, uh, 11 R times 
one C. That means, you know, I don't know why it isn't showing, but there will be a small box next to it and that will say uh, 5R, uh, 11R times 1C. That means 11 rows by one column, 11 rows times one column, right? So if you highlight all the way down to this, then it's going to be 12. But um, it's 11 because think about it. End of end of 2000. As I said, this is as of the end of the year. So this house price is end of 2000 as of end of 2005. So think about it. End of 2005 is the same thing as the beginning of 2006. Right? Again, if we draw a timeline. Think about it. In this timeline, um, T0 is the beginning of year one. In other words, if this is, uh, then that's also the end of year zero. In other words, if this is end of beginning of 2006, That point is also the uh, end of 2005. It's the same thing. Right? Everyone is okay with that? Beginning of 2006 is the same thing as end of 2005. Right, right. Uh, it's a common sense, right? End of today, right? Midnight. End of today is midnight tonight, right? Is the same thing as zero hour tomorrow, right? End of 2021 is this December 31st, midnight, December 31st. And that's the same thing as zero hour January 1st, 2021, uh, 22, right? So we counted it from end of 2005. So actually, by the time we get to, um, if n is 11, this point will be, two thousand end of ah end of 2016 right okay so the time uh, if you think about the timeline uh, it's only 11 years in other words um, yeah it says uh, you can also see it here right here right as I highlight, right, the data range, you see here, you will see, uh, it says 11R times 1C, 11 rows by one column, right? So that confirms this 11 data point. Um, so let's think about what is the uh, uh, capital gains, right? We want to do this. Think about it. We want to do this. Exactly. We want to do this. So then what do we need? We need this, right? Uh, the capital gains, right? So what we need, you know, it's not a, it's not a big deal. It's just the logic. Uh, you will need to... Uh, from 2016 house price, you will need to uh, subtract 2005 house value, right? Um, so capital gains is this. Also, we can find capital gains this way, um, year to year capital gains, right? 
in other words, annual, right? Annual growth in the uh, uh, house value, which is, you know, simple. This minus this, right? So in 2016, right? In other words, between, between the end of 2015 and the end of 2016, there was a capital gain of 86K. Now, the rest of it is the same thing. I mean, here, you will also need to do exactly the same thing. Um, it's going to be then B3 minus B4. Isn't that right? It's going to be B3 minus B4. And it's the same It's the same formula, same logic. You don't want to repeat it. You, it's going to be tedious if you have to do it over and over. So all you need to do is I'm going to copy and paste. Okay, I'm going to copy and paste everything. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste this formula, right? It's not the number that's going to get copied because number is only only the result of the formula, right? So I'm not when I copy, it's not going to be the number that gets copied. It's going to be the formula that gets copied. And then um, there are two ways you can do that, two ways. Uh, one, uh, as usual, uh, you select the cell and go to home, copy, and then highlight these uh, cell range and just paste, right? Or when you select a cell, when you select a particular cell, um, and when you you see the cursor is when you are hovering over a certain cell, the cursor is basically a fat white cross. But when you bring it to this southeast corner, that's that's what I call southeast corner, right? Uh, that's southeast. Then the uh, cursor turns into a thin black cross. And if it when it turns into a thin black cross, it's called. Uh, it means you know. Uh, Excel is ready to copy and paste. Okay, so then all you need to do is uh, just gently hold down the left mouse button, gently hold down the left mouse button, and then drag it down. Okay, you drag it down only to uh, 2006 because we didn't we didn't have the house in 2005. We didn't have the house in 2005, uh, and don't. Once again, this is the uh, house price at the end of 2005, right? At the end of 2005. So this is not 2005 data, but this is the, uh, uh, the house price at the beginning of 2006, okay? And to have capital gains for 2005, I need the data for 2004 as well, but again, we don't even need that because we didn't have the house. We didn't own the house in 2005. Okay, so think about it. These are annual capital gains. In other words, year to year capital gains. So then think about it. If I sum everything, if I sum all of these, it should be equal to this. It should be the same thing. Isn't it right? If I sum everything here, it should be the same thing as this. Right? That's a common sense, of course, also. Uh, whether you subtract this from this, uh, that gives you the uh, capital gains for the entire 11 years, or whether you, uh, whether you add up all the annual capital gains, um, it should be the same thing. Let's see if it is the same thing. So if it is, you know, sum, sum, right, sum command, sum, and then highlight everything there. Of course, it's the same thing, right? Then next, let's find holding period return. In this case, Now, 
Um, we are, you know, the formula for the return is basically capital gains plus cash flow uh, divided by initial initial price. Uh, but again, you know, uh, ignore this, ignore this for now, uh, because when you buy a house, you can have two, you can have two uses. I mean, you can have two purposes for the, for the house. First of all, think about it. You can, you can buy a house and use it as your home. In other words, you can, the house is your residence. Right? And of course, you might think, you might say, you know, yeah, house is my residence, what else can it be? But you can, there can be another, there can be another use for the house. You can utilize the house to generate income. In other words, you can rent it out. Right? Suppose you buy a house, a multi-story. Right, multi-story house. So it has, you know, three floors, three stories. The house has three stories. Then, you know, uh, you can use uh, one floor, and you can rent out the other floors. Right? Does that make sense? In that case, then it will generate income. Right? So uh, let's call the former scenario one. In other words, and the letter scenario two. The former is what? Scenario one is the case where you just buy the house and live in it. Okay, and using it only as your home. And therefore, in that scenario, you don't have any income. You don't have any uh, additional income. The only source of income is capital gains. Right? Makes sense. So, so that's scenario one. Scenario two is you rent it out. You live in it, but you also rent it out as well. And in that case, there will be additional income. Every uh, month, you'll have rental income. So we will only think about scenario one for now. We'll only think about scenario one for now. So in scenario one, uh, what's going to be the, uh, uh, the holding period return? It's obvious you will need to uh, right the capital gains. Uh, in other words, uh, we need this, and this is zero because we don't you know we're not renting it out. Uh, this, which is capital gains over initial price. So then, that divided by initial price it should give you this, right? And then in scenario two, uh, okay, so did everyone get the same result? Please let me know. Don't keep quiet. If you didn't get uh, the same result, you should again, quiet. Please. Hmm? Can you do it again? Can can I do it again? Uh, which one? Only this one or the whole thing? Just that part. The yeah yeah yeah. That's that's what I did. Okay, that's what I did. All right, did you get it? Yeah. So did everyone did everyone get the same result? Okay, if everyone got the same result, then. Uh, uh, we, let's take a, a 10 minute break. It's 2.57. Uh, so let's take a 10 minute break um, and reconvene at like uh, 3.07, 3.08. Okay, all right.
Does anyone know what happened? We're on a break. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, we got like another five minutes. <clears throat>
All right, we're back. We're back. Let's see um, yeah, how, many, how many people we have here now. 15, 14. Professor, we don't hear you. Yeah, you're muted. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, thank you for reminding me. I thought I was I was uh, unmuted. <laughs> uh, thank you for reminding me. So I'll have to repeat everything all over again. All righty. So getting back to this. Uh, so in scenario one, right? In scenario one. Uh, we found the holding period return in scenario one. So holding now, holding period return in scenario two. So it's the holding period return with the cash flow, because the uh, the formula. Look, in scenario two, we have not only capital gains, but also some of all the uh, uh, additional income, right? And our income in scenario two income in scenario two is our rent, right? Rental income. And we have, this is the, uh, so apparently we are, we started renting out, we started renting out from 2009. For the first three years, we didn't rent it out. Uh, and then from the fourth year, we rented it out. And we started out with like, you know, $1,500 a month, the rent was 1500 a month. Uh, so annually, 18,000, 18,000. And it looks like from the third year, and so this is more like sixth year, right? Uh, the rent went up by 10%, right? The rent went up by 10%. And then from 2013, the rent was uh, $2,000 a month. Well, it, you know, so um, everything, you know, um, with inflation, you know, uh, it's only natural that uh, the rent goes up as well to reflect the inflation. Uh, so here, we need the sum of all of these. So we can use also some command, right? Like, you know, we can use this. And, you know, uh, we can also, instead of, you know, actually uh, entering it all over again, we can also copy this to the right, right? Bring the cursor to the southeast corner and just drag it to the right. Okay, then it's the formula that's been copied there, right? So when you copy, it's not only to the, you know, uh, it's not only down, it, you can uh, paste it up or you can drag it up, you can drag it to the right, drag it to the left. Um, but anyway, now we have capital gains and uh, additional income. So all you need to do here is now then, uh, 
capital gains plus sum of all the uh, uh, original income divided by the initial price. Okay, everyone is okay up to this? Some people were always mm -hmm. asking, oh, what's the formula there? What's the form? Well, so far, there is no particular formula. It's just the logic, right? Logically, that's how you would do it. Uh, there you go. That's the, you know, holding period return on the scenario two. Now then, let's annualize it. But then how do we annualize it? Again, you cannot divide it by 11 or, you know, that's, that's totally pointless. Uh, the first thing you will need to do is uh, think about it. What is, what is, you know, a, a simple average? What is, you know, basically the average that you know of, right? The average that you know of is the simple average or arithmetic average. And that's like, you know, uh, uh, when you are, you know, uh, averaging the uh, height of the people in this class. Let's say if I'm taking the height, uh, if I if I want to know the average height of the people in this class, what would I do? I will have to measure your heights individually, isn't it right? And then sum it up and divide it by number of people, right? So just like that, to find the uh, uh, average return, the first thing you will need to do is find the uh, annual returns year by year and then add them up, right? And divide it by 11. But that's arithmetic average and that's not the, uh, that's just roughly okay, but that's not accurate. Uh, that's why we're going to need to uh, use geometric average. But the first thing, um, we want to do is see look at column f and the column f the label is g what does that mean that's the growth rate growth rate of the house value so in 2016 how much did the uh, house value grow actual growth portion right was this capital gain is the growth portion right and it grew from it grew over and above 2015 house price, 2015 house value, right? So you divide that by that, then you will get, that's the uh, growth of the house value for the year 2016, right? And then you can do the same thing. You can just drag it down for uh, the entire uh, date rate, uh, data range. So everyone, everyone got, everyone got the same result. Now first. Yes. Yeah, good, good. 2015, there was no change, right? House value, there was no change, so 0%. Uh, years like 2013, house value actually went down by 5%. Look, uh, this means negative. The capital gain is negative. Right, capital gain is negative, so that's capital loss. And then uh, there are three ways the negative numbers are expressed in Excel. Uh, of course, with minus sign, uh, that's first. Two, with parenthesis. Three, red font, red font, right? So then think about it. Uh, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, sometimes Excel uh, automatically picks it up. What, uh, what type of, what pattern they were, uh, what notation is going to use, it automatically picks it up. So um, sometimes they, uh, sometimes it is uh, represented by both red font red font and uh, parenthesis. But if it is not a red font, then at least parenthesis will tell you. So this means, you know, of course, in 2007, uh, there was capital loss. 
So they have to be negative, right? But now think about it. How do we find, so we want to average this. These are annual returns. And the, um, if it is return Y, you might wonder why is it not R? R here, column, uh, column G has actually R, the label is R, uh, but in column F, the label is G. Well, it's basically the same thing, uh, but in, think about it, in uh, column G, uh, column F is the uh, return in scenario one. Column F is the return in scenario one. Uh, whereas column G is the return in scenario two. So what's the difference? In scenario one, return is exactly the growth rate. Return is exactly the growth rate, right? Return is exactly the growth rate, nothing else. But in scenario two, the source of the return, there are two. It comes from two sources of, you know, the return comes from two sources. One is capital gain. The other one is uh, additional income. So return is not exactly the same thing as just the growth rate in scenario two. Okay. However, in scenario one, uh, return is exactly the growth rate. So that's why I made that distinction there. Now, then think about it. When we have all these uh, annual growth rates, then we take the uh, simple average, right? Try taking the simple average. Um, then what do you do? In other words, arithmetic average. I will sum everything and then divide it by 11 number. We know it is 11, but I would use count command. Why? By using count command, right? By using count command, it will exactly count uh, the exact number of data points. Okay. And you might wonder, um, uh, is there any, uh, benefit to that? Yes. For example, in this example, we have only 11 data points. It's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. It's not a big deal. It's not difficult to visually confirm. It's not difficult to visually confirm the, uh, uh, the, the actual number of data points. But if you are dealing with, you're not always dealing with, you know, a very uh, a small sample you will be dealing with, uh, you can be dealing with like, you know, a very large data set. If you're dealing with very large data set, like, you know, 600 data points, you know, 600 something, you cannot visually uh, confirm how many data points, right? In that case, you know, uh, count command will come in very handy. Uh, some people may, uh, some people <laughs> panic and ask, you know, do I need to know? No, no, look, uh, you don't, you just learn it little, one by one as we go along. You don't have to uh, panic. Uh, it's not like um, when you learn to drive, you don't need to know everything about the car. You don't know, need to know about its you know, uh, engineering. You don't need to know about uh, how it is built. You don't need to know about, I mean, that knowledge about the structure of a car and you know, uh, fuel system, and you know, uh, electric electrical system, and all those things. You know, it, uh, mechanical system. It it doesn't hurt. I mean, it definitely helps, of course. It's a plus, but you don't need to just to drive. You don't need to know everything. You only need to know whatever. Only what you need to know. Not everything, right? Some students, you know, uh, panic and ask me, you know, do I, I don't know anything about Excel. Do I need to take a separate course in Excel? No, you don't need to because um, we're not using everything that can be done on Excel. 
you ju we just need to use whatever is you know necessary right and it's not a difficult thing you know uh, some uh, that's some count count is count it's you know self-explanatory um so if you do that it comes to a uh, uh 12.21. Now, see how much difference there is. I mean, uh, you know, uh, suppose you divide it by 11, right? Divide it by 11. I can do the 11 by also. Uh, Two thousand sixteen minus two thousand five will give you eleven exactly, right? Yeah, look at this. How much diff? So once again, that's why I'm telling you, dividing dividing holding period return by eleven is meaningless because uh, they are. It's not the average of annual uh, data points, right? Annual growth. Uh, again. Uh, arithmetic average is still not, uh, it's just approximation. It's not exact. It's not exact. So to, to have an exact um, uh, average, we have to use geometric average. And I will give you then The geometric average is all explained in the main lecture, and also uh, it is all uh, the mathematical uh, reasoning behind it is all ex explained here. Uh, but just for a simple, um, uh, we're going to come back to this later because the whole um, thing will be explained uh, in topic two, time value of money. So until then, um, you don't need to uh, bother with, uh, uh, you just, for now, you just need to know so geometric average G like future value over present value raised to what? 1 over n raised to 1 over n minus 1. OK, so to put it into our context, what is the future value? Future value is price of the house in 2016. That's what's in the future, right? And then present value is the uh, initial price, price of the house in 2005 over, uh, raised to, n is 11, right? Right? Minus one. So also we can, we can also express it as, uh, we can do it like this. PT over PT plus N raised to one over N minus one. Okay, so let's try, oh, where was I? So then let's try that to find geometric average, right? So uh, what's the, uh, future value, this is the future value, right? Divided by the initial price, the present value, and raised to. When you do raise it to one over N, you have to put that one over N in the parenthesis. Otherwise, um, Because you know, uh, uh, if you don't put it into parentheses, uh, it's it follows always PEMDAS. Everyone knows what PEMDAS is, right? 
Yes. 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 Yeah. Parenthesis, parenthesis, right? Exponent, right? Uh, multiplication, division, you know, right? PEMDAS. It follows that order, right? So if you don't put it into the parenthesis, what's going to happen? It will just raise it to one, and then the whole thing will be divided by n. So n, we know it is 11, but again, just to uh, uh, just to make sure. Uh, I will count, right, uh, from here to here, right, or and then uh, minus one, close parenthesis, and minus one. Now, here in this in this model, in this formula, you might uh, wonder. Um, you might have noticed that this is the symbol for raising something to power. Yes, it's got a name. The name is carat, right? Which is, you know, from French word carré, which means square, right? Carré. Um, and this is, some people call it head sign or cone sign, but the official name is carat. And it is the uh, universal machine language, universal machine language for raising something to power, right? Okay, so here, and let's hit enter. If you hit enter, you will, you will get 11.57. So did everyone get the same result? Everyone got the same result? Yes. Let me know. Yeah. Okay, good. No, someone said no, but so retrace it. Where did you go wrong? Did you do it exactly like this? Uh, this part, uh, you can, if you want, you can do it like, you know, um, A16 minus, I mean, A2 minus A13, because that way, Right, 2016 minus 2005 will give you exactly 11. And the data, the initial input data, original input data was already there. I mean, you didn't, none of you entered any of these initial data, uh, right? Column B and column D were already put in there. As long as you didn't touch it, it's still the same data value. Uh, it will give you the same result. Okay. All right. Anyone still not getting the same result? Anyone? All right. So here's the thing. Ah, geo so what is geometric average? I mean, the difference doesn't seem that significant. Well, it may not, it's not even 1% difference, but look, if it is for one, one or two years, the difference may not be significant, but piled over, if the difference, you know, this difference piles over like 10 years, 20 years, 11 years, 20 years, the difference is huge, right? The difference will be uh, significant. Uh, another thing, what is geometric average then? Now think about it. What is arithmetic average? Arithmetic average is the case where, as I said, you know, when I want to uh, find the average height of people in this class, I would use average um, uh, arithmetic average because the data that I use, think about it, the data that I use are all synchronic data. Synchronic meaning, you know, data coming from the same time, right? And the... So it's individual height of you, everyone in this class, and none of these heights, none of these data points are correlated with another. Think about it. There is no correlation unless two of you have some, you know, a common DNA, right? The height won't be correlated. One person's height isn't correlated with another person's height, right? So the data, data points are all independent and they are uh, taken from 
the same time, right? Same point in time, so uh, synchronic. So in that case, it's, co it's called, you know, a cross-sectional data, cross-sectional, cross-sectional, because I'm pulling out the data from a cross-section of a sample group. You are my sample group. If there are 25 people in this classroom, from 25 people who are completely uncorrelated, right? And at the same time, I'm extracting this data. So it's cross, uh, it represents the cross-section, cross-section of this sample group. And then um, it's synchronic. So uh, it's called cross-sectional data, also called uh, uh, latitudinal data, latitudinal. But in this case, think about it. In our example, our example is the uh, uh, house value change, the trend of the house value over time of a particular single particular house. Right? Makes sense. And then in that case, think about it. Every, every price data, every growth data, they are all correlated with each other. Isn't that right? One year's, this year's house value is the result of the growth from the previous year, which is the result of the growth from the previous, previous year, right? Which is the result of the growth from previous, previous, previous year subsequently. And therefore, each data point is correlated to the previous year's data point. So the data, the data are correlated, right? And it's the result of the growth from the previous year. So when we are dealing with the data like this, it's called historical data, historical or time series, time series data, time series, or longitudinal data. So when we use the longitud longitudinal data, one thing that uh, one thing that you should remember, one, one thing that you should consider is the compounding effect. Compounding effect. Think about it. Uh, if the house value grew 10% this year and 20% last year, this year's house value is the result of 20% growth, 10% growth over the 20% growth Look, this 20% growth is over this 0% growth, which is over this 16% growth. In other words, this growth rate is having an impact, right, correlated uh, to the next one. So that's compounding effect. Compounding in a, a simple analogy, compounding is like... Uh, when you stand on top of the mountain, when you stand on the top of the mountain and then uh, make a snowball and drop it, drop it there, drop it on top of the mountain, it's going to roll down. It's, it's going to roll downhill. And as it rolls downhill, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But the rate at which it's getting bigger will be accelerating as it rolls down. Why? Because the surface area gets bigger, so early, uh, early on, when you just dropped it, there isn't that much snow that gets added to the snowball, right? There isn't that much because the surface area is small. But as the surface area gets bigger, the amount of snow gets added to the ball will get more, right? It will get a greater amount of snow as it rolls down the uh, hill, with every revolution of the snowball, the amount of snow that gets added to the ball will increase, right? It's not at the same rate. That's basically the concept of compounding. Um, so because of compounding, you can, um, you have to use geometric average because uh, if you use arithmetic average, it is overstating 
the true growth rate. It will be overstating the true growth rate. Right, everyone? So that's why we need geometric average. Why? Uh, again, uh, as time series data, time series, historical data, and there is correlation between data. There is growth going on here. Because of the growth, uh, there is a compounding effect. So we have to use geometric average. Okay. So um, uh, time is almost up. Uh, we want to find the geometric average in uh, scenario two, scenario two, but uh, we're out of time. We're going to have to do that uh, next time. Okay, we'll have to do that next time. So any questions so far? Any questions? <clears throat> yeah, um, so uh, I'm missing two cells. Can, can I just see the formula real quick for um, yeah, yeah, yeah. B15 exactly. and B16? So I could copy. Okay. Which one? B15? Yes. Okay, so that's C14 divided by mm -hmm. B13, C14. Yeah. So, so it's logic. It's logic. Mm -hmm. No no formula. And which one? And B13. Um, the one under that is B16. It's still logic, right? Because it's holding period return with cash flow. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah, I'll, I'll take, no. yeah, uh, Braylon? Is it Braylon? No, uh, I don't have a question. I just said no. Okay, all righty. All righty, so uh, if, uh, if you have no more questions, the class is, dis class is dismissed. Uh, have a great afternoon, everyone, and uh, I will see you. Uh, I will see you on Monday, right? I'll see you on Monday. All right. All uh, right, you too, professor. All right. Thank take you, care, professor. Everyone. Have All a good right. day. All right, take care. Thank you, professor. You too, Claudia. Take care, Alicia. All righty, I'm gonna stop sharing, stop recording, and sign out.